So we're going to talk about the trends, technical trends in and around BPM. Um, I think BPM is morphing. I agree with Nathaniel that it's going to be goal-directed. I also believe that it's going to be autonomous and control will not necessarily be central in all cases for all parts of the automation. Robots will be happening. So if you want to understand goal directed, I finally saw a video that it finally helped me understand that it's not just a piece of software. There's a Boston Robotics has robots and they had a video of a robot picking up a box and these guys are kicking the robot, they're pushing it over, they're taking a hockey stick and moving the box, going like, that box is that robot's goal. And that's how software is gonna work. So if you wanna understand Goal Directed, that's probably the best video. Um, I'm not as smart as the rest of the people in the room, so I have to see something like a video to explain it to me. So we're gonna talk about um, Aragon as a company. We're a research firm. Um, Unlike Gartner and unlike Forrester, we're trying to come at it from what I call perched on the picket fence. We're walking between business and IT. So we have some areas of business that we're really good at, like Salesforce uh, automation um, and also CRM, um, as well as technical. So we're a pretty small firm. We have some uh, advantages. One is we use a lot of interactive video and interactive audio um, in our research, embedded in our research, and you're going to see more things around podcasts and video casts coming from us. Our customers like us because we're not big and you don't have to go through a lot of uh, overhead to talk to analysts. And um, some of the analysts are, besides myself, are Jim Lundy, who covers uh, collaboration, content, um, and sales automation. We also have Adrian Bowles, who we brought on recently, who covers AI. Um, we also have Ken Delaney, who covers um, IoT and mobile, and myself. I'm BPM, um, trying to figure out whether I should do RPA or not. I'm trying to get my hands around, because it has a continuum of meaning that I can't get my hands around quite yet. Um, also customer journey mapping um, and digital business platforms, which I'll, I'll talk about. Nathaniel believes that there's no one tool set that has it all. I'm saying there's a set of tool sets that have a lot of it. So that's what a digital business platform is. It's a different picture uh, than Nathaniel had. And you know, it's a question of which picture you want. So we're going to talk about some of the key shifts and trends. And here are the, and you know, the name of the pitch is don't get caught with your technologies down. If you're a vendor, you've got to be working in these areas today uh, on the left, which is the red, and you should be thinking about 2021. So we're going to drill down into these 10 on the left, which is predictive deep learning, sales enablement, video assisted, chatbots, you can read like I can. And what we see is it moving towards intelligent digital assistance, fully automated enterprise, blockchain, solar power, self-driving cars, the things that we're starting to see emerge. So, you know, in a very short period of time, four years, um, we're gonna be looking at different kinds of new technologies. So we believe that applications, processes, and resources are all going to get smarter. I tried to hint at that back when I produced the IBPMS, which is the Intelligent Business Process Management Suite, um, but it, wasn't, it didn't carry as much as I thought. The word smart or intelligent didn't mean as much to the market as it does today. So we're going to see applications that are able, able to predict, that are smarter, that can see, that can hear, that can understand language, and help humans do tasks. And so what we see is the notion of decisioning again here becoming important. In fact, one of the key pieces that are missing from the digital business platforms today as they exist is some of the decisioning pieces. So that's a market that I think 
we are going to probably focus in on from a hot vendor perspective. One of the things that uh, Aragon does is it tries to identify small budding vendors, growing uh, areas of interest, and we think decision management is a key piece going forward. Um, I have a rules background and a decisioning background. When I worked at an insurance company, we needed it heavily for underwriting. We needed it heavily for um, settling cases. So um, the second one is big data and deep learning. We think as organizations invest their money, we think they're going to move from left to right, and they're going to concentrate on machine learning. Now, the, at last count, I found 112 machine learning algorithms, and I think I'm just scratching the surface. I think there are a lot more than that. And trying to figure out how they're classified and where to use what takes a lot of horsepower. You need, um, and eventually, it will it'll consolidate down to the ones that provide the most benefit. So um, we can see that the focus is on recommendations. It's easy to deploy. It's fairly cheap. Uh, we see it a lot uh, used in understanding content, understanding contracts. Um, I suspect there'll be machine learning in that, that lawyer ro robot that you were talking about, Nathaniel. Um, the next is deep learning, which is where you're learning on the fly and you're actually updating um, your knowledge as it goes. And then there's cognitive computing where you have expert systems. Um, you use hardware and software combinations and highly trained on specific topics. So uh, we think uh, that training them takes longer. Um, IBM's Watson takes a long time to train. Um, in fact, we've seen some organizations even get upset enough with IBM and Watson to say, we're going to rebid. Um, there, there's one um, classic case that's out there, and I won't mention it because, I mean, I hope IBM's successful and they learn how to train things faster. Um, so the Internet of Things, um, this is a really hot area. We know all of the devices are exploding. The issue is how do you manage them? How do you get them to talk to each other? Right now, the biggest issue around the Internet of Things is standards um, and getting different protocols to talk to each other. Um, it seems like there's a couple of standards committees that are moving in a good direction, and it seems like the Nest protocol seems to be gaining a lot of steam at this point in time. So we're going to see. Um, not only will we move to goal-driven in BPM, we're going to move to autonomy at the edge, smart at the edge. So it's not just smart centrally. And that means that our Internet of Thing devices will start having chips that are smarter, either pre-burned or programmable. Um, and so those kinds of smarts are going to be at the edge. And the question is, is BPM the way we knew it? We knew BPM as what? An orchestrator, a manager, a, a, a collaborator and collector of all the results to present it visually and to show what was going on with predefined processes. Well, we'll still be able to support that with BPM, but in the future, it's going to be dynamic. And probably the example, and I may have used this last year, um, it's still a decent example, is GM Cadillac Division has paint booths that bid on the work. So if a robot that's carrying a Cadillac um, you know, car, the high-end car, let's say a CTSV or an ATSV, um, the paint booths will bid with the robot to decide who paints this car. So the, the robot that's carrying the car knows when that has to be in the dealer and can backward analyze when the painting needs to be done, when all the steps need to be done. That robot can also analyze the bids to see which one of the painting booths um, has a really high quality rating um, and a high quality rating with the color 
that that particular car happens to be. So let's say it's Trincoat Red, which is one of my favorite col colors for catwalks. And I had one at one time. That's when I could feed a gas guzzler. Now that I'm retired, it's, uh, it's unleaded and cheap. So, um, so we see that devices are going to have more smarts. They're going to be able to bid. They're going to be able to act autonomously. And each of these IoT things will become smarter. Now, sensors will probably stay sensors unless it's important. But for the most part, everything is going to get smart, and smart is moving out. And they're all going to be directed by goals. And we want lawyers out of the mix, don't we? It's also going to have constraints. And the idea of constraints says you can do anything you want, but don't do this. Any of you have any older children, like teenagers, or ever have them? Have you ever sent your daughter or your son out on a first date? Do you repeat all the rules to them as they go out the door, or do you give them constraints? You say you can do anything you want, don't drink and drive, don't use the back seat, right? And uh, don't drive fast with friends in the car, right? So you give them constraints, and that's how all of our bots and our software bots are going to be. Sales engagement programs are here because we think that there's an order to which business is going to go after things. Sales first. We already passed CRM, right? CRM is ancient history, but it's going to come back again in a different way. Sales engagement platforms are the next, and then service engagement pro, uh, pro, uh, platforms will be the one after that. We think video-assisted business applications is important. The top five use cases are corporate communications. And the other way that BPM is going to change, it's going to be more aimed at work management than just pure process management. So it's going to manage collaborative work like you see on cases. In fact, all the collaborative tools have included lightweight BPM. I mean, it's the fasting area. Look at Box. Look at Hello Sign. Look at all of these fast burgeoning companies in Silicon Valley. They're all including a form of workflow. BPM is everywhere. That's why the interest is steady. They don't know it's BPM. A lot of the vendors call it workflow. But it's a form of BPM. BPM is everywhere. Corporate learning, content marketing, sales communication, and customer support. Today, we can tell when somebody looks at a page in an offer that we've given them who's looked at it for how many minutes and how important it is. So our sales guys are equipped with that kind of capability to know where the interest is. We, I'm not supposed to spill the beans, but I just did. So video is going everywhere. There are no common tools yet. It's a wide open market. There are established best practices. And it's used a lot in training. Um, and it's used a lot in measuring impact um, of capabilities. There's also um, a rise of chatbots and digital assistants. Now, I happen to have a chatbot. And I find that. It's a surprise as to how it works. This is an interesting story. We had some friends over for dinner. So we're in the middle of uh, dinner, and uh, we didn't mention our chatbot's name at all. I mean, it, it has a name, and you got to call it a name. And you ask the chatbot to do so. We're in the middle of dinner, and we mention a key word, and the word was steak because we were having steak and something else. And for me, that's a big treat, because my cardiologist says, you got to stay away from that stuff. Um, and all of a sudden, an ad comes over for Omaha Steaks through my chat bot. I never asked for that. So I'm not going to turn it off. I'm not going to put it in a room where it's isolated, and then I go in and ask it. But I know that thing's listening when I don't think it is. And I, I think an issue is how, how many ads are going to get pushed through you, to you through these chatbots. It's kind of scary, actually. You know, it picks up on 
conversation all of a sudden starts doing stuff and you haven't mentioned its name. Now I use it a lot for music myself. Um, you know, play me something from the year 1983, which I thought was kind of a peak year for good music for me. So what we see is a movement to full language and action. Well, what is action? It's BPM, right? You know, BPM is all about getting things done. You know, a lot of things can sense. A lot of things can help you with decisions, and that's going to be a growing area. But at the end of the day, you have to take action. So we see that really smart digital assistants are going to come fairly quickly. We think the next area after sales uh, enablement platforms is service. So supporting the continuum and reducing overhead, in 2016, self-support was hot. 17, it's chatbot agents. And 2017 to 2020, I believe it'll be cognitive-enabled customers and cognitive-enabled service reps. Imagine a nice service rep that knows how to talk to people and deal with people that's given the knowledge for whatever particular condition. If you're interested in billing it, this agent can handle billing because it's got a cog whispering in its ear. Or, I hope not embedded in her brain. But, um, so the notion of su customer support is gonna grow. Virtual reality is gonna become more and more important um, as you know, dashboarding and managing things, gamification is already embedded. I hope they start looking better. That poor guy looks like a blind guy. Um, and they are gonna start looking better. You can see glasses now that, um, I, I think everybody steered away from the Google Glass version, because that wasn't exactly, and by the way, mine's still in the box. I'm saving it to give it, uh, sell it or give it to one of my grandchildren in pristine condition. It was a failure, frankly. Um, but I think, and that's why these units have more functionality. I think you're gonna see it change over time. And by the way, I'm, I'm an artist and I sell digitally and I wanted to create digitally, so I, I've tried uh, Google's Tilt Brush. It's a great tool for creating 3D artwork. Problem is, you can't really sell it. You can't capture it at a certain point in time. You can capture it in the video, but these things have to become more embedded with business, uh, and, and art is a business. And by the way, it's impossible to break into the art business unless you know somebody in a gallery or you know how to get around things or in museums. Even though I've had stuff in the Louvre, I've had things shown uh, in Times Square, uh, so, which is kind of cool. We also think the rise of work hubs. I don't care if you call it a workbench. I don't care if you call it you know, a role-based or a persona-based. The idea of work hubs that work around a specific role and set of functions, this stuff is hot. In fact, there's one small vendor that combines IoT and work hubs um, in two you know, kind of different industries. One is for infrastructure management for companies that have big infrastructure issues like utilities or oil companies. Uh, and they use these work hubs for the managers and the workers. So they have mobile uh, workers. So uh, that is, um, it's taken off. And I can't say the name of the company that uses it because otherwise we'd get sued. But, um, they also use it for doctors for medical rounds. Um, the IoT is feeding in results real time from the patient, tests, collecting uh, voice snippets, uh, and also uh, comments by the doctors, the patients, the nurses, and it's all available in a work hub for the doctor. And they can issue new prescriptions, they can issue new tests, they can issue new protocols, um, and, and new treatment plans all from this work hub. So we think this is hot stuff as well. We also see, you know, drones are gonna go to work. We're gonna see them involved with surveillance. 
Uh, we've seen them uh, involved with delivery. We believe that long term there'll be drone based service. I, I can't wait till my washer breaks and some drone car drives up and a drone robot comes in and fixes my washer. That'd be kind of cool. Can't wait for that day. It's not far away. The other thing that we think is important is blockchain. Now, when you look for real blockchain in production today, there are a few. And, and the reason there are a few is it has to be contained, constrained, um, small volume, not real time yet, because blockchain just keeps building and building and building in data, and it has a high reliance on the network. Um, but it's very, very secure. But we believe um, it may take 5G or 6G and other kinds of networks to make this work, and it may require new kinds of computers, new kinds of chips. Certainly, it's going to require GPUs over CPUs. And so the notion of um, blockchain for security and process integrity, we think, is absolutely crucial. Now, this is probably where Nathaniel and I somewhat disagree. We believe there is a thing called a digital business platform. And we, we believe there are two reasons for it. The first one I think Nathaniel will let me slide on, and that it's an architecture. So people have to know which part of their architecture to fill in. So we've come up with one that in the, in the center are emerging digital technologies. I'm talking about the 10 that are important today. Next year, it'll be another 10. The year after, it'll be another 10. Um, it may be 20. I mean, I didn't mention nanotechnologies that brewers are using now. They have nanobots inside of their brews, inside of each of their vats, doing real-time measurement to see what's going on instead of having somebody sample, take it over to the lab, check it out. Meanwhile, the time that it takes to, to deliver where that vat is and the, the liquid in it, um, you lose some, some precision. So I didn't talk about nano. Um, nano is going to be crucial. Um, didn't talk about you know, how it's going to affect our DNA and body. That's a different thing. But DDP is not just an architectural con construct. It's a cornerstone that companies can build on. Um, wh when I worked at American Express, when I worked at Northwestern Mutual, we always had this saying, and, and that is you have to at ride at least two horses. Um, and so we would have one vendor that we were riding hard, and that was our primary vendor that we built around. And then we had a secondary one on the sidelines just in case they, they failed. Um, so I think we're going to see that they're going to be cornerstone vendors. And what do they do with the emerging technology? They build it into process and cases. I'm thinking of renaming this work management. Um, not quite sure yet. I still like process. I'm a process bigot, unfortunately, uh, as well as a rule and decision bigot. Process and cases, cognition and calculations, deep big data, fast data, um, APIs, integration, fast development, machines and sensors, and then pre-built applications. I don't care if it's a process snippet, a cog in the sky um, that you can download um, you know, from the uh, cloud or use dynamically from the cloud. These are the five pieces we think are important. The above the waterline is where the business deals with them or people deal with them. The human engagement and the, the multi-channel is on top. The productive agility for change is on the bottom, and variable speed operations. I mean, we're dealing with IoT devices that are nanoseconds, right? Faster than I could snap my fingers. Um, and we believe that it's not just a technology platform. We believe this is where business and IT collaborate. So it's going to use some model-driven. It's going to be using some search for APIs to find components and leverage them. Um, it's not single vendor focused. Um, I'm here looking for hot vendors to augment digital business platforms because, frankly, they don't do a very good job in decisioning. They don't do a very good job on inventorying components, frankly. 
There, there are pieces that are missing in all of the big digital business platforms. It also does not require a, a holistic report uh, approach. And it doesn't stifle in innovation. There are many on-ramps. You can start here or you can start here. And what we're finding is people are taking easy on-ramps to digital. Digital transformation scares people. That's one of the reasons the term's gone down. You see a lot of articles now equating digital transformation to re-engineering. And we all know how that went. So this is incremental engineering, which may end up in a re-engineering job. If you happen to be in the taxi business, you're getting re-engineered whether you like it or not. So I, I think uh, it depends on what industry you're in, but people are taking different on-ramps. Some people are starting with IoT. The infrastructure-based companies are. So the truth is, you know, it, business and technology collaboration is happening on a digital business platform. It's meant to augment constituent journeys. You know, we have customer journeys. That's a hot area. That's, we're going to produce uh, a rating of customer journey um, vendors in the next three months. Um, we think that's hot. And there's also employee, vendor, and partner journeys that are just as important that need to be considered. Um, and we think it's about focused and specialty problems to start. And it's not just for large businesses. There are a number of digital business platforms that are Microsoft-based, easy to use, not all that expensive. And the key part is if you have digital business platforms, what did I do? I, I didn't say anything important. That's what happened. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's okay. I don't need the slides. So. Now yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Thank you, hotel. I, I, God, I knew you were going to get me for lying one of these days. No. So the notion is a digital business platform is meant for innovation. So a digital business platform um, allows you to try new technologies. Now, imagine if you're a CIO and you have all these shiny, flashy objects coming at you, new terms. Are you going to sit and spend all your money? Now, if you're American Express, you've got money coming out you know where, right? So you can throw things against the wall and see what happens. And that's what we did when I was at American Express. When I was at Northwestern Mutual, we were a little bit more conservative, but we believed that IT and technology saved money. We proved it. And the one lesson that we did learn is that, yes, it saves money, and you can do more work with less people, but it also allowed us to innovate. We had an underwriter workbench, so we used some of the workbench ideas, and we used AI, though we found out that um, what, what caused us to go into an AI winter um, also, ah, thank you, God. Oh, and it came up on the right screen. How did that happen? I can see it here, so I can talk. You can't see. Soon, so anyhow, um, at the last point on that slide, which had seek truth on it, the last thing was continuous experimentation and innovation. The one thing that you're going to see, and I'm going to get a, a little bit ahead of myself in the presentation, is these digital business platforms will concentrate on having change management pieces built into them. And by having all these pieces working, have you ever tried to do change management across multiple technologies and having them synced? That's a difficult problem. So the digital business platforms allow you to do that. Um, also, we believe that digital identity um, is going to be a key piece. 
Now, I can't say that we're all going to get, you know, little um, injections in our, our hand and we'll have chips inside of us, or whether the government is going to sneak a nanobot in the next flu shot um, so that we're identifiable, or that the government is going to get rid and the banking system is going to get rid of cash, and if you want to, uh, if you want to um, do business with anybody that you're going to have to get a, uh, a, a, ta a laser tattoo on your forehead or your forearm. I don't know if that's going to happen. But the digital business platforms will have identities for each of the participants um, that are involved with dealing with them. So a digital business uh, platform for operations, I'm going to use this color scheme um, in the slides going forward. Um, if the process side is enabled in, a, in one of the case studies, you'll see gray show up. If the business applications, uh, purple will show up. If it's machines and sensors, which is IoT, blue will show up. If it's cognition, red will show up. If it's green, data and systems will show up. So I'm going to run through one case study, and I know this is a vendor-focused um, situation. If I made any mistakes in the past years, it was... I would go through lots and lots of case studies. I'm only going through one this time, Nathaniel. I finally learned my lesson. Old dogs can new, learn new tricks. And this is, uh, this is the one where a drone is checking pipelines. So you can see that it starts off with a process in a case, business application, and machines and sensors. So the drone is the machine and sensor. It's going after the infrastructure, looking for cracks. Um, looking for potential weak spots. It has a camera on it, uh, a thermal camera. And what it does is it tries to identify issues. It, when it sees an issue, a process is kicked off that will call a business application that dispatches crews to that location. Now, it may have to be a helicopter because it's you know, over an inaccessible site. It may be close to the roads. Um, so it will leverage the geolocation um, using mobile workbench. So the, the guy or gal that's going out to, to check the issue in the pipeline will have some kind of workbench. Then um, it, to build an infrastructure management workbench, which is the manager's view, how many problems do I have going on, how many crews are are going with real-time feedback as to what's going on, that requires more systems integration, more data than before. And if you're um, trying to optimize where your crews are dispatched, you're going to need some cognitive capability or algorithmic capability to um, optimize the dispatching. So here's an example of a using a digital business platform. All the things are connected. They work together. By the way, this is a real live solution that's in production from one of the digital business platform vendors. And I, I won't mention their name because they're not here. So we created the first rating of a digital business platform uh, in the world. and we have a thing that's not as scientific as a magic quadrant because we believe we want to be involved with the markets early. No, I said it's not. The magic quadrant, uh, well, theoretically it is. You fill in a spreadsheet and the, and the dots come out. So, I mean, you know, when I was at, yeah, I know, I know, I know. So this is less scientific. So what we try to do is identify whether somebody's a leader, a contender, or promising. And it's only the two high weights are, does it have the functionality? And two, do the customers get good value out of it? Do they have use cases? Are the customers happy? So you can see a number of, of key leaders here. Um, some of them are on you know, the lower price points. Um, like Ivitix, Nintex, and PNM Soft. And you can see a mixture of kind of odd vendors here, don't you? What do you see on the, the left side? 
NVIDIA and Intel, you're like, what? What is that up there for? Well, remember I said that the decisions and the smarts are going to the chips? This is the robotic side of it. It's the GPUs, it's the CPUs, it's the downloadable logic at the edge. Well, we all saw Intel show us with Lady Gaga's show at the Super Bowl what goal-directed drones can do, right? They can be a flag one minute and a Pepsi symbol the next, right? And they used, I think they used hard coding in that case rather than a true digital business platform that was really as goal driven as I'd like it to be. But they've shown that you can have autonomous capabilities. DARPA's had that for a long time in watching troop removal. Um, and you see it a lot there. So you can see some key people that are really good at IoT like Cisco, uh, GE, and Bosch. Uh, Google should be a leader, but they can't seem to package things and sell things in solution sets that people can understand. Um, you know, they have a lot of great technology, uh, but putting it together is different. Microsoft has some. We see the traditional dominant players like Oracle and SAP kind of sliding back because you you have to buy the whole stack, nothing but the whole stack, so help me God. Or should I say Larry? Oh. So the, the notion, and we, we see one of the vendors here, two of the vendors here, W4, ITSoft W4 and Cofax that are here today are on this particular uh, site. Now, the danger with this is you can't update this once a year. So after I get done with my hot vendors in different sectors, starting in September, I gotta come up with another way of updating this before the end of the year. So we may have to call it Tech, Tech Spectrum 2017 version two, which you, know, you don't see any version two magic quadrants, do you? So we're trying to be much more uh, mobile in our rating. So we think complete uh, and comprehensive digital identity will be critical and we think digital business platforms will have to include them. And the real advantage of a digital business platform is a vendor has to work on solving your problems instead of you buying all the pieces and piecing it together. I would rather go to W4 and say, you solve it for me. Or I'd rather go to Cofax and say, you solve it for me. Get her done. And by the way, I've got another digital business platform uh, who's my horse number two, your horse number one, and if you don't deliver it, they will. I, I think it's a good way to play vendors off. We used to do that all the time. So the notion of a digital uh, identity that knows what you like, what your constraints and your goals are that are giving all of these parts of the digital business platform um, goals and constraints to move forward. We believe all will include change management uh, from smooth production uh, promotion to full sandbox support. We believe that that's where we're going. Now, the digital business platform is an emerging thing. You know, I've got this end picture here, but I haven't peeled back the onion to see where the detail is. This is what we call our digital DNA, and the um, the green dots are all the interface dots. IoT is blue. Um, AI is red. Um, the purple is the service uh, business function, which is the second one in, in, in uh, companies' uh, sites, and then process. So we see that goal-driven processes is the end game. Nathaniel said earlier, well, we saw goal-driven processes. I still believe in it. He's right. It's just at the end of the curve. I mean, it's, it's out there. So we're gonna see more of that happening. And as we move from early time, which is on the right side, to more futuristic times, it'll be on the left. So we think each of these are growing. And by the way, my re this is a preview of the research note I'm gonna produce this month. It's in editing now that talks about how this um, is going. So am I on time? Uh, what we're getting, that was actually at 12, because we're just over uh, the counter for the power outage. So see if you can wrap it up 
Yeah, yeah, this is a summary slide, baby. So anyhow, technology is changing faster than ever. Vendors uh, need to leverage new technologies. There are a lot of vendors in the room. I hope you got something out of this. It's harder to speak to vendors than it does end customers, got to tell you. Uh, and Aragon, we think, can help you. We help vendors. We help end customers. We'd like you to become a client. Um, and I personally would like it if you bought one of my books. So anyhow, thank you very much.